And I think one of the things that I've recognized as Chuck and I have traveled this nation now forever, it seems, is that I'm finding a people now that they've kind of made it past the let's be big, uh, let's seek the sensation, let's see who can do it the fastest, let's see who, what magazine cover we can get on, let's see who can get the biggest this and that. There, there's a remnant of people in this nation right now that are going after him. They don't, they're not into that stuff anymore. That's what Chuck, when he says we're, we're moving from church, we're not just trying to build our own congregation on the corner. We know we believe in the local church. We have to have congregations that meet together. But the focal point is the king and his kingdom. And the church is a facet of that. The ecclesia is a facet of that. So we're really not going after the expression of, of our congregation or the glory of a congregation. We're going to take it up a notch and we're trying to glorify the king of the kingdom who will bring his presence. And then all the churches start growing. All the congregations start growing. And we all get back to basics and the weight of his glory comes into our midst. And he's recognized because when he comes, he comes with signs and wonders. He comes with deliverance. He comes with blessings. He comes and he's recognized and he's no longer mocked really because even those that mock him will say, we don't know what to do with this. God's there. People being raised from the dead. Blind eyes are opening. This guy's never walked in it in his life. He's over here running and leaping and praising God in the temple. And the, and the world saying, I don't know if I want this, but I know this is something different. And so I just want to say to you, even though for a season... The glory of the Lord has been lost in this nation. The glory of the Lord is not in trouble. In the presence of God, he's not nervous. In fact, when they shipped, the, when the Philistines carried the ark off, they tried to set it up so they could mock it in their temple with their other gods, and God just kept knocking it over, knocking their gods over, I mean. Every time they go in, they set their gods back up, and they come in the next day, and he'd, he'd knock them over again, breaking their hands and their feet off. And then everywhere it went, and they made fun of it, he smote them with tumors. Some translations say, I know this sounds hilarious, some translations say he smote them with hemorrhoids. They said, get this thing out of here. We don't want it. So they, they, they went to one of the small towns over here. There's probably something prophetic in that. One of the small towns over here in the corner of the nation that said, would you like to have this thing? Yeah, we, we'd like to have it. And so even, the, even when it looks like it's lost, do you, do you really think he's going to get lost? I mean, he's over here guarding the ark of his presence until the, the right time until the portal opens, the gate opens, and somebody comes along that says, we haven't sought for this thing in 20 years. And it even, it even you read the context, it's like they had, to, they had to say, like, does anybody know where it is? Where, where is it? It's, it's over here in this... Oh, okay. Let's send some people to go get it. So he can take care of himself. And as a part of this point, I just want to add, he wants it to be found. It's not like he's hiding. He's just waiting for people that want the presence and the glory, not glory for themselves, his glory, he, him to be glorified and honored and seen. And when you go looking for it, he needs a people that will do it his way, doesn't he? He's not just going to allow the glory to come back because we have the right formula or a few brother or sister wonderful 
have the right meetings with the right advertising and slogans and the right worship team in. And he's waiting for people that will humble themselves and say, it's all about you. We want you. And we're going to do this the right way. I also want to say, this is my third point quickly. The same, I've already alluded to this, but I want you to make sure you get it. I'm going to say it directly. The same glory that brings blessing and breakthrough brings judgment. And it happened to the Philistines. And it happened to Uzzah, who's bringing back the ark and reaches out and touches it when they presumptuously decide to do it their way. That's another thing, by the way, that's encouraged me, not the judgment, but the fact that as I've traveled this nation, and I don't only travel uh, with Chuck, he and I both travel a lot on our own. And I was in the, uh, almost 80 cities last year in America, and I'm on a pace to match it this year trying to forerun in this nation to stir people to pray and to believe and to keep the hope alive for this third great awakening. But I'm finding people everywhere I go, everywhere I go, everywhere I go that are crying out for this. And there comes a point when, even though we did it wrong for a season as a nation, maybe even prostituted the glory. There comes a point when there's a remnant that's crying out loudly enough to say, we want to do it right. And if it means we carry it instead of the ox, if it means splinters on our shoulders because we're carrying this thing for 20, 30, 40 miles on our shoulders with poles, then so be it. Bring on the blisters and the blood and the splinters because whatever it takes to get this we're going to we're going to have it and i would just say this to you on this point of judgment as the lord exalts himself he's going to bring down that which has opposed him and we're not to be alarmed at the feverish resistance in this nation right now to what he is doing. The warfare is intense. The demons are manifesting, and they manifest in a lot of ways, including violence. But do not be discouraged. The glory is returning. And those who have opposed him will be dealt with. And those who are welcoming him in the right way will be exalted. The fourth thing I want to say is the glory returns to a remnant before it returns to many. First, he comes to those who know how to host his presence appropriately. David wanted the glory. He wanted the ark next to the throne in Jerusalem. But he still had just a little bit of this glitz thing on him, you know. As king, I'm going to make sure that we do this right and get a fancy new cart and come up with a really great new idea on how to get it. And the Lord said, I don't want fancy carts and oxen. I want raw shoulders. 
And I want this carried by the priests. I don't want it carried by animals. I want it carried by people. I want them to carry my glory. That's always been my heart, is to have it with people, humans. So don't bring me a bunch of oxen and new carts. Get it as close to your heart as you can and carry it for me, David.